Hey, welcome back to number six. Here I'm just showing you that if I plug in these points that I say are solutions, uh, they should work. So if I plug in like two for X and four for Y into this inequality, it should work. So it says Y is greater than, so I'll say, and I'll plug in two for, so four for Y. Control equals gets me my um, inequality signs. So four is greater than, then I have X minus one squared and I'll replace X with two. So two minus one squared, and then it was minus three, so minus three. That's a true statement. So anything I plug in that's a solution should make a true statement. Anything I plug in that's not a solution should make a false statement. So let's do negative five, negative eight. So I'll put replace y with negative eight. So I'll go over here, negative eight, or I should use the negative button, negative eight. All right, and then replace x with negative five. So negative five, that's false, see? And I put that in the not solution. So that's all there is to that. So you may wanna graph it, it may help you, but you don't necessarily have to. You can just plug in the, the coordinates into the inequality to see if it's true or false. All right, so number seven. If you wanna do number seven all on the graphing calculator, what are the solutions to this quadratic inequality? Uh, change the zero to a y and then you can graph it so you can do it as a relation and then I showed you you know control equals pulls up the inequality signs so um, what I did was I typed it in 2x squared minus 18 is greater than or equal to y so replace the zero with the y and then you get this so you need to find your boundary points. That's your x-intercepts. That's menu 6-1. Click, highlight, click. Menu 6-1. Click, highlight, click. Now with this, you could see that it's at negative 3 and 3. But let's say it's a decimal and you didn't know. Then definitely do that menu 6-1. Um, so the shading is going to the left of negative 3 and to the right of positive 3. So your inequality symbol should point that way. It's going to the left of negative 3 and to the right of positive three. So X is less than or equal to negative three or X is greater than or equal to negative three. I use the or equal to because this original had an or equal to. But yeah, that's all there is to it. So number eight is the same question, basically. Just replace the zero with the Y and then graph it. So I graphed it, the shading's on the outside again. See, so yeah, I replaced the zero with the Y. And then I can see this is at negative two and that's at five. Let's just say it was hard for you to read. Menu six, one, click, highlight, click, negative two, zero. Menu six, one, click, highlight, click. So negative two and five, it's going to the left of negative two and to the right of five. So X is less than or equal to negative two. Actually, it shouldn't even say or equals two. It should just say um, less than. So forget, forget that part, all right? Um, because look at the sign. That was my bad. So anyway, number nine. Um, if you were to put it in vertex form, what's the axis of symmetry? The quickest and easiest way to do this is to graph this. All right? And I'll explain to you all the other stuff. But just graph x squared minus 12x plus 46. So I have that typed in. And um, it's typed in right there. But nothing shows up. So we need to zoom out. And then this is, we need to look for the vertex. So is this the max or the min? Is this the highest or lowest point? This is the lowest point of the graph. So I'm gonna to go to analyze, minimum. Click, highlight, click. So 610 is my vertex. The axis of symmetry runs through the x-coordinate of the vertex. It always runs through the vertex. So x equals six. So that answers the question, answers the question of um, what's the axis of symmetry. Well, let's say they ask you to convert it uh, to vertex form, well then I just plug in 6 and 10 for H and K, because you know vertex form H and K, that's where the, the vertex goes. So I'd say X minus 6 squared plus 10. And then how do I know what to write for A? A is the number by X squared, because it goes AX squared plus BX plus C. And so this is the same A. So if A is 1, then you could write a 1 there, or not write a number there at all. But yeah, if they were asking you a question, it would look like that. And if you wanted to be super sure, graph this. X squared, so I'll go back and I'll type in, um, I'll type in X minus six squared plus 10 
and you see they make the same graph. So that's how you know you properly converted it when they overlap, okay? Um, but yeah, if they just ask you for the axis of symmetry, find the vertex, it's the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now number 10, this is a subtraction problem. So distribute the negative to the right. So this turns into plus six, this turns into negative four i, combine like terms. Four and six are like terms, that makes 10. Two i, negative four i, make two, negative two i. That's all there is to say about number 10. Number 11 is a multiplication problem, so distribute everything. What's 8 times 7? 56. 8 times 4i, 32i. Negative 3i times 7, negative 21i. Negative 3i times 4i, that has 2i, so that's going to make an i squared. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, so it's negative 12i squared. Your 2i's in the middle will combine for 11i. i squared always turns into a negative 1 by definition, so negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. So I just combine that with the 56 for 68, and then I just bring down the plus 11i. When it says write it in the standard form, that's what it means. Normal number first, imaginary number second, and that's it. Um, number 12 is just an addition problem. Addition problems don't change any signs, so I have nothing to distribute. So 8 plus negative 4 is just like saying 8 minus 4. Uh, negative 3i plus 8i, you can ignore the parentheses. So 8 minus 4 is 4, negative 3i plus 8i, that's like 8i minus 3, that's 5i. That's a positive 5i, so I'll put plus 5i. And that's going to wrap it up for the review. There's actually nothing, uh, nothing left after this. So uh, thank you for watching, good luck on the test, and goodbye.